I hope it's more like a pep talk for the country, but take a knee, America. <laughs> Gather around. So uh basically everybody has a cause in my generation. Everyone's got some sort of thing that they, you know, they got going. They're a vegetarian, you know, they love the earth, they, you know, want to legalize pot or something. All of these things have in common, the one thing that all these people, no matter they want to like solve global warming or whatever, at the end of the day, these people just want to help people. That's the main thing at the basis of all of these. And, you know, I'm not a big cause guy. I'm more of just kind of like a, you know, get through the day, sort of deal with what I have to deal with and sort of just stay out of trouble guy. But this is a cause I think that Everybody who at the end of the day just wants to help people that we really just got to help people. You know, if you don't, at the end of the day, like I'm really calling upon my generation. We get a lot of, we got a lot of um, flack from, from the old elders. Grandma's listening. Yeah. No, almost swore. A lot of, a lot of guff. You get a lot of guff. Who, uh, who, uh, you know, give us a hard time for being on our phones. But I think we have the potential to be one of the greatest generations looking at historical context. The last time a pandemic hit the United States was 1918. 1918 was when the greatest generation of our time was born. They grew up during the Spanish flu and the great depression. They fought in world war II and they helped us achieve this post-war um, debate, debatable, but boom, that brought, you know, a lot of better to a lot of people's lives. I think we have the potential if we really deal with this virus, we combat it. You know, the older people really have to, you know, sit on the sidelines for this one because at the end of the day, they're going to get sick and we got to step up and, you know, the younger ones are not going to do anything. <laughs> so like we can't depend on preteens, the TikTok generation aren't really doing too well. Like, oh, oh. Your like, generation shaming out of the bat. Okay. I mean, I'm just saying they're too young. So we got to step up. We got to start helping out our communities. You know, you got nothing to do. You're sitting inside. You know, if you're healthy and you can, if you're an able body, go out with masks and gloves and disinfectants, you know, deliver for your favorite restaurant, help out your favorite restaurant, help out your community, deliver for old people, make sure you're disinfecting everything we got to start taking care of the elders who have taken care of us for our whole lives, you know? So, uh, we, this is our D day. Yeah. This is like legit. Like they're saying that like, you know, like honestly, like you could say that our lives were pretty boring before this, just in the general way. Like now we have a cause. So let's mobilize, motivate and just get it going. we We could really accomplish something here. Now, I'm not saying th- this is no disrespect to the greatest generation on earth, but we could be the LeBron to their MJ, if you will, of mm. something that we can get going. And to do that, we really got to look at our, you know, our privilege as being a citizens of the United States of America, because, you know, debatably, but pretty easily, we could say that we, you know, our government will not get authoritarian with us and lock us in our homes mm-hmm. and force quarantine us. So we have to take that privilege of, you know, them trusting us to do the right thing, to go out and sort of make sure we do not spread this virus. Billy, but don't go outside, right? Don't go, out. don't go outside. Don't go just, out. just listen to directions and try to help out as much as you can in your communities and societies because everyone's pretty stretched thin right now. Um, just if you're an able body, just do what you can to help out this situation. You know, um, Basically, the Spanish flu, I'm looking historically, the Spanish flus were hit worse the second winter. Now, think about this. We got hit with this as America about, what, February, I'd say, January, February. We only have the back end of winter. Summer, it's going to get better. But if we don't act now, come the fall, we're going to get hit harder than we are now. So if we act now, we can do things like, you know, if you don't care about, if, if it's slipping your mind that you got to save elders you know you know your friend's little sister with asthma we got to think about one thing we're not going to have football come fall that's right for the first You're time right, for the first time since i think the invention of american football we're not going to have football and you know if that's your driving force like i played 11 seasons of tackle football if mm-hmm. i'm going to miss my senior season because people can't get their stuff together i mean 
and you know act like good citizens of this country then i don't know what we're gonna do so if we can and then if we don't if if football gets canceled god forbid and hopefully it's not just, this just forget it after that yeah, yeah because the second winter is gonna just like it's not gonna i'm not gonna say it's gonna destroy us because we'll persevere because I know, i'll get to that in a minute but okay. we need to you know get our stuff together so we can solve this like listen like stop partying i know it's spring break just stop because there will be no other spring break if you keep partying and that might actually that might sound like like we we want another one okay yeah like but not if the coronavirus is still around yes right yeah. So, yeah. so, I mean, if for no other reason, just let Billy have his senior night. Like, I want Billy to be walked across the field by his proud parents, you know, mm-hmm. wearing roses and big buttons with his big smiling face on, on, <laughs> pinned onto their chest. If you don't let Billy have that senior night, then that's on you. Like, I don't it, – it might not float your boat right now to be like, oh, I'm going to stay inside and not party. But just think what you're doing to William football. And they, yeah. like, think, think about somebody else. I mean, yeah. if you're not going to do it for the people you love and you're that sick in the head, I mean, maybe do it for me. I don't know if that would attract people. No. Whatever it takes. Do it for you. We don't want Billy football to graduate in a fucking Zoom meeting. Come on. Yeah. Let's go, people. Exactly. Anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, Tell me more about the Spanish flu, Billy. The Spanish flu was insane. So, actually – it was the first swine flu. Oh. It, it actually, it was actually, it started in Kansas. Swine is pig, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the, the, the hog farms in Kansas were right next to a U.S. military base, and it spread amongst the U.S. Mm. service members who then went to Europe and spread it all during World War I. And that was the first winter, and it wasn't that bad. But then the second winter, it went nuts. So if we're looking at pandemics, that's also a respiratory disease. They say it killed more people than actual casualties in World War One. I. I know I'm scaring people right now, but don't worry. There's a there's a there's a silver lining at the end of this, and I'll okay. get to it. But um, I don't want to scare any more people. We have enough people trying to scare people. But at the end of this, listen to this: the plague in the Middle Ages mm-hmm. led to the Renaissance. The Spanish flu in America led to Probably World War II, but it led to the post-war boom that we're all still practically enjoying. Well, you could say it led to the to the defeat of Nazism. Yeah, the rise yeah. first, we, but then yeah, the but defeat. then also the yeah. defeat. Right. right. Make but sure you get that part in there. Think about what when we get out of this. When we do, not if. When we get out of this, because we're going to get out of this, it's going to take a lot. Think about what that's going to what's going to happen. It's going to be a renaissance of the 21st century. And when we get there, we can celebrate. But right now, we got to make the – we got to do the blocking and tackling to get it done. Mm-hmm. That's right. What do you, yeah, before you do the touchdown dance, you got to win in the trenches first. Now, what do you think the, the 21st century renaissance is going to look like? Just a honestly, shitload more podcasts? No, honestly, it's going to be content creation. People are, gonna, people are creating content in their homes. Everyone has nothing to do. But I think it's going to bring back a lot of stuff that we lost during the tech generation because – if you're using tech, you can't film other tech unless you're playing video games. But people are going to bring back traditions that they sort of lost because they're too busy on their phones and stuff. What are the people going to film? I've seen people like bringing back board wrestling. games, board games, handshakes, more stuff like crafts, no. traditions that were lost, like right. you know, amateur the- pornography. Wait. There's going to be a boom in, in amateur, like just homemade porn. Just oh. kicking it with the guys. Like grandmas. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh, sorry, sorry. Come on, PFT. Come on, Come on dude. Nana's listening. I'm, I'm, we're gonna get to the fun stuff later.